Welcome back, fellow Earthlings, to another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Bible. My name is Rogan, and you are watching The Mysterious Stoner in a Boner. If you're joining us for the first time, I am an ex-Christian. I was raised on the mission field, very conservative, and wasn't raised in a typical denomination, uh, similar to Baptist, but not quite, but you can see my whole story about that in a bunch of other episodes. Here we talk about the Bible and the things in it that are useful, worth learning, and the things that are not so good about the Bible. That we should definitely not copy and take an example from. If anything, an example of what to not do, what we shouldn't do. And when, you know, God's just being a terrible individual. It, it's, it happens quite a bit. But no more dilly-dallying. We have got a story to get into today. And that story is the story of Esau and Jacob, the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Do you remember them? Yes, in the previous episode, we talked about how Isaac kind of relived one of his father's tales, except it didn't quite go the same, because he didn't get a lot of stuff out of it, like his dad managed to, somehow, twice. But never mind that. Those have their own episodes that you can go scam, that, scam, sorry, <laughs> that you can go check out. Sorry, I was just thinking about how Abraham is such a fucking scammer. A uh, word popped into my head and out of my mouth. But, oh yes, you know what, speaking of scamming. Well, you know what, we're going to see a bit more of that today. Yeah, it really runs in the family, it really does. But, we start out right at the gate. Esau and Jacob, these are the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. That lovely match-made couple. Also with its own episode. There's, there's episodes on all of these. That you can go check out anytime you like. But Esau came out of the womb first. So he was considered the oldest. And he was... Like, he was seemed more like a, like a bigger, hairier man. He's, uh, he was a hunter. And his dad really liked him. He was his father's favorite son. Jacob, on the other hand, Jacob, he was more of a mama's boy, you might say. He learned to cook and, and got good at it and, you know, hung around with his mother a lot. And he was his mother's favorite son. So you can imagine this probably created some sort of rift between the two brothers. I have no idea how much, how much they fought or how well they got along, but their first little incident starts off with Esau coming back from a hunt. And he's very hungry, and I don't know if he was being overly dramatic, or if he was, or if he was really famished to the point of being delirious, it's quite possible. I mean, they lived out in the wild, so you know, and who knows how long he'd been gone. But he gets back, and he's super hungry. And instead of just giving him food and you know helping his damn brother out like he should have just done, instead Jacob doesn't give him the food that he's making. And he says, no, no, I'm not going to give you any of this stew unless you sell me your birthright. Now, I'm no expert on the technicalities of what the word birthright means. But it sounds pretty literal like inheritance going to the eldest son something passed down birthright it's yours by birth 
And I'm thinking probably physical inheritance. When father dies, it goes to Esau. Maybe Esau was that delirious or that ridiculously starving, famished, I don't know. He sold it to him. He said, what good is my birthright to me if I die? I need this stew to stay alive. I wonder if, I wonder if there were some things left out here. I don't know, not a whole lot of details, that's, but that's pretty much how it went. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of stew that his brother made. He might not be the most brilliant guy. Or he may have been legitimately famished and... I don't know, but that was a dick move on Jacob's part. Honestly, I think. But that's not the main portion we're going to focus on. Oh no, that was only the beginning. See, that little story happened before last week's episode. I just wanted to clump it in with this one because it kind of goes together. But, so, you, you'll understand we had to jump forward a couple chapters. That's, that all happened in chapter 25. And so now we're going to jump forward into chapter 27 where the real shit goes down and where the bigger scam happens. So we come to chapter 27, and here Isaac is getting old. His eyes are going out on him, and he is starting to lose his vision. He can't see very well anymore. He's going to do a lot by feeling. So he calls in his favorite son, Esau, and he says, Look, son, my vision's going. I'm, I'm probably going to die soon, so... Because I'm, I'm really getting up there in years, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling too great either, you know. Old age is catching up with me. So, what I want you to do is to go out, get me a deer, some venison, cook it just the way I like it. Bring it to me, so that I can eat it, and my soul can bless you before I die. Now, this was a big deal, almost, it seems like it's almost as big of a deal as the birthright, getting this special blessing. I don't know what made it so special. I don't know why it only had to be one time, and could only be this one time right before he died, or, or, or such. There's no technicalities given as as why this blessing is so important, but it's it's going to be a real father son moment, I guess, and he's he's gonna he's gonna really bless his his boy, I guess. He's got he's got a speech prepared for him and everything. So Esau's like, "All oh, right, right. This is this is a really important moment. I've got to go do this for dad." And he goes out and he goes off hunting. But it just so happened that Rebecca overheard the conversation that Esau and Isaac had. And she decides, you know what, I'm going to get that blessing put on Jacob. When she came to Jacob at first, Jacob was like, um, you know, this doesn't seem like such a great idea, you know, trying to cheat dad and everything. I mean, he's going to be able to tell by, you know, kind of like, kind of like you know, my voice, maybe. I mean, I'll, I'll try to, to mimic Esau if I can. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not hairy like he is. Esau's really hairy and I'm, I'm really smooth head. He's going to know. And, you know, Esau smells like, 
you know, woods and and the fields and everything, because he's out there hunting, and me, I smell like the fucking kitchen. You know, Dad, Dad's gonna know it's me. He's he's gonna be really mad, and he could even curse me. But Rebecca says, um, "It's okay, it's okay. Whatever curse comes on you, let it be on me." She literally says that, and she tells him what to do. It's like, go get a goat. We're gonna cook it. I'm gonna make it up to where it tastes like what your father really likes. And I've got just the thing in mind to take care of that hair problem. And so what they end up doing, which, I'll, well, you tell me what you think in the comments down below if you think this would really work on a blind guy. They take the skins of the goat. They okay. They get some clothes. They put they put Jacob in Esau's clothes, and they take the goat fur and tie it onto Isaac, onto his neck, his arms, his legs, just in case, probably, uh, so that he would be hairy, like Esau. Like, what the fuck is Esau as hairy as the Yeti? As Bigfoot? As a goat? Literally? Really? Is, it, is Esau a caveman? So Jacob goes in with the porridge and all dressed up in goat skins and Esau's clothes into his father's tent. And... He manages to convince his father that he really is Esau. And they, you know, they... And Jacob is really doubting... Sorry. Bloody hell, I keep getting the names backwards. Isaac is really doubting that it's Esau. Because he's like, wait a minute. You got here really fast. How is that even possible? You... You just left not that long ago, maybe a couple hours. How are you back so fast? It usually takes you a lot longer to find some, you know, some really good venison. A couple days even. But Jacob was like, oh, the Lord really blessed my hunt. And Jacob was like, well, I mean, Isaac was like, well, come closer. And so he comes closer and he, he smells Jacob. He's like, oh yeah, this yeah, this this does smell like him. And he feels Jacob, feels the fur, and he somehow thinks that it's Esau. And the stew tastes right. Because Rebecca was a damn good cook, apparently. And Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob. And right as Jacob is leaving, he's, got, he's gotten out of there, he's gotten the blessing. Not long after he was done, Esau returns. Having done well in his hunting, I guess. And he comes in, he's got everything prepared, just like his father likes. He comes in, he's like, I'm here, father, I got the stew, it's all ready for you. I've had it, I hope you enjoy it. I am, I am so ready to be blessed, I'm so ready for this. And Jacob, fuck, sorry, Isaac, Isaac is like, Who the fuck are you? I, you, you, no, no, I blessed Esau earlier today. You're full of shit. Uh, it didn't, it did not take them long to figure out what happened. And I, like I said, I don't understand why. 
Isaac couldn't just do another blessing. Even if he, you know, even if he had to rest, recharge, wait till the next day, or next week even, like, that's not so bad. Give him another blessing then, you know. You could reword it a bit, you know. You, it don't. Why? Why is there only one? And only one son gets a blessing. And Isaac is like, I mean, Esau, sorry, Esau is begging his father for a blessing, and it, he has to beg him a few times, but Isaac finally does bless him, kind of wings it, I, I, I suppose, I suppose that's what happens, but you know, it, you know, it's nothing as glorious as the blessing he gave to Jacob. And Esau is pissed. He's super angry. And he he wants to kill Jacob. He, like, he's got that look in his eye. And Rebecca, Rebecca knows. Rebecca knows he's going to. And it even it even says Esau states when he's going to kill Jacob, like, he's going to wait till after his father dies, and, you know, the time of mourning is over, and then he's going to fucking kill Jacob. I don't know how, Ray, how, how Rebecca could tell. I'm sure she, she could see it. I don't know how these, how this specific time frame got brought up and mentioned in the Bible, but it's there for whatever reason. But he's super pissed. Rebecca is able to tell that her oldest son is very angry and is he's, he's got that death glare about him whenever he looks at Jacob. And so she tells Jacob, you need to leave. Now, like you you just you need to go, you need a pack of things and you need to leave because you need to stay alive. If you stay here, Esau is definitely going to kill you. You leave now. You know, he's going to be obligated to stay because he loves his father. That's what I'm guessing the reasoning is. Because he's, you know, he wants to stay around for when his father passes away, if he's so close to dying. And, you know, you need to be gone from here. You need to get as much of a head start as you need so you can stay alive. And that's what ends up happening. And then right at the tail end here, it's rather strange. After after the whole threat and everything, I, I, I don't understand how things were resolved between Jacob and Isaac. Because, you know, surely Isaac knew now, but it doesn't say, you know, if Isaac forgave him or, or whatnot, but I mean... I guess he did because it Isaac then tells him exactly where to go and tells him where to get a wife from very similarly to how Isaac's father told his servant where to go to go get a wife for his son. Go get a cousin for my son. Doesn't matter who, so long as it's, so long as it's one of our cousins. Gotta keep that shit in the family. And Isaac is passing on that information to his son Jacob. And he, and he even gives him another blessing before sending him off. The story now splits from between the two, and we follow Jacob for a bit, but that is for next week, where Jacob goes and his 
well, we have more marriages and things to come of that nature. And more scamming. Yes, even more scamming. And that, the Bible is just ripe with scams, isn't it? So strange. So strange. But let me tell you, the scams coming up in this next episode... Or it might be the one after, we will have to see. I'll have to do some reading ahead of time before then to decide. But in the next episode or two, we are going to have a really interesting scam happen. And it, it involves marriage. And I will leave it at that. So what can we take away from this strange story? Well, for one thing, don't play favourites with your children. It might be really difficult, but they are a bit of you. Sure, they're a bit of your partner, but... Oh, you love your partner, don't you? All of your partner. And then, of course, your children are going to have their own unique traits that are like neither of you. So, really, you know, I think if... Isaac had loved both his children equally, and Rebecca too, that would, have, that would have been really great, that would have been the ideal, but if even just Isaac had loved both his sons a bit more equally, you know, you'd think he would have come up with a way to create two equal blessings, you know, to divide the birthright between the two. You would think, you, you would think Perhaps God, who is supposedly faithful and just, you know, he knows a thing or two about being fair, supposedly, would, in all fairness, instruct Isaac to split the birthright and blessing between the two sons. You would, th I mean, why not? Why not? Why couldn't he have done that? And avoided this whole fucking catastrophe. This whole ridiculous family drama. I mean, this is bullshit. Jacob scams his own brother. And then he practically does it again, indirectly, so to speak. But he scams his own father. I mean, in a way, serves his father right a little bit for lying to people you know in the previous story but this is to this is to a whole nother level of karmic backfire i mean maybe this is maybe this is some build up from abraham scamming the kings from before i mean yeah thanks to rebecca also helping him with it He managed to successfully trick a blind man into not knowing which son he was giving his blessing to. This is a terrible example of a family. Isaac is a terrible example of a father. Rebecca is not a very good example of a mother. Esau is... I mean, he's the most innocent one here. I mean, I don't know what the deal was with that stew and that birthright. It's really hard to say who to blame there and who, who was dumb and who was smart, but... The poor guy gets fucked over twice here. And Jacob makes off with the birthright, with the blessing. And then he gets a little bit more of a blessing after that. And then you, sh you should see the shit he ends up with down the road. Oh yes, yes. Scams aren't the only thing that run in this family. It's also wealth. And attaining wealth, so it seems. Specifically through scams. But we will see all that in the future. 
So yes, this is this is a book of scams, and and their God Jehovah isn't stopping them, isn't punishing them, isn't doing anything about it. Things are just happening, and God's just letting it go. These are the forefathers of the chosen people of God. These fucked up scammers. Isn't that wonderful? That the entire Christian religion, so many of them claim, come from these fools who, well, not fools apparently, the people they scam or the poor saps, I feel so terrible for them. But according to this book, according to the Christians, these are spiritual heroes. These people are all in heaven. I don't want to take a, I, I don't want to take after any of these people. I would hate to be Esau. I mean, you know, how many times have you been fucked over by someone? They completely get away with it. He has every right to hate Jacob. Shouldn't want to kill him. But he really takes that birthright... Well, sorry, he, he seemed to really take the blessing seriously. And I wonder if afterwards he realized, eh, maybe I shouldn't have traded my birthright after all. Or maybe, you know, he had some resentment for Jacob already for possibly forcing him into a position to where Jacob, uh, to where Esau was starving, or he was already starving, and Jacob had the ability to let Esau starve to death. That could be what happened, and how he got Esau to give him his birthright for a bull of stew. I mean, if, he, if Esau was that weak and famished, and no one else happened to be home, or what not, and all it, would, all it would take would be just a bowl of stew to get Esau right back where he needed to be. Jacob did it somehow. He talked Esau out of it, and then he took his, his birthright, his blessing. That's not fair of God. God should not be okay with that. Because Esau is an innocent victim in both these situations. He is not avenged. Jacob isn't punished. Rebecca is not punished. Isaac doesn't punish anyone. He doesn't ground Jacob or, you know... I don't know what, what's type of punishments would have been appropriate back then, but then again, we probably don't want to know, considering how sexist they were. But there's just no reaction to the things that Jacob and, Jacob and Rebecca do, except for Esau getting angry. It doesn't even say that Isaac gets angry. The shit that doesn't get mentioned, that should be. Does Isaac even care? Do we know if he, I mean, he, he must care. But really, what is his attitude towards Jacob on the matter? Yes, we see what he says, but I mean, whoever wrote this was really terrible at it. Because they leave out so much that is important to know. But we must make do with what we have. And now we are at the end of the video. So if you've enjoyed the story, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, share, and come back again next week. And we will continue the story of Jacob. And the bullshit 
he gets to go through. He gets a bit of comic backfire on him. A little bit like Isaac did, but, oh yes, it's good. It, it's quite a tale. But until next week, my friends, stay safe and farewell.